Hello friends, welcome to my channel. Please click the subscribe button and press the bell icon and never miss another update from Almighty Java. In this video, we will implement the register user functionality by using the React and Redux. There are around 23 more videos are available on my YouTube channel, so please watch them also if you have not watched. Otherwise, during watching this video, might be you will not feel that much comfortable. But if you have the basic understanding of the React and Redux, then please watch. Here is the quick demo about which we are going to implement in this video. So here is the register user screen. Let's fill all the fields and click on the register button. User saved successfully. You can see the message on toast also. And after a couple of milliseconds, it will automatically redirect back to the login page. Now let's log in using the username and password, which I just saved during register. User logged in successfully. Now click on logout. See, user logged out successfully. Message is also coming. This register functionality we are going to implement as part of this video. So watch till the end. During watching this video, if you feel this video is little fast, then you can make it slow by using the YouTube setting. Recommended video speed is 0.75. I hope basic information about this video I already gave. So let's implement the changes. Implementation will start from the backend code and that we developed using the Spring Boot. So here is the project. Let's open the user resource IMPL class. And here is the method for authenticating the user. As you can see, in the case of authenticate user, method produces media type value that is deprecated. So change it to the application JSON value. Now let's create a new method for register. When you click on the register button, then we will pass the user object. So the register method type must be post. Here endpoint value should be register. And at the end, it will produce the JSON. So use the media type same as authenticate method. Here I am just adapting the method signature and basic logic from the authenticate method. Okay, now basic code I already copied from the authenticate method. Here password we need to encrypt. So open application class. Here is the code for saving some initial data. Let's copy the password encryption logic. I hope this line is clear for you. From the register page, we cannot choose the role. So by default, I'm planning to set the role as a user. But here, set role logic, we need to modify. But for now, just I'm setting it to null. After applying basic changes, we'll modify the role related code also. Now call the user repository, save and flush method and pass the user object. Save and flush method will return the user object. So hold the saved user value. Now add some message in JSON object like user saved successfully. So here, instead of user, I'm using the username. And at the end, return the JSON object. Return value format, I'm just following same as authenticate method. You can see in try and catch from both the blocks, I am returning some value. So delete the last line. Register method basic logic be implemented. The role also need to pass, but for that we need to modify the existing code. Open application class. As you can see here, I am passing the ID manually. So let's remove the ID related dependency. Open the role class from this constructor, remove the ID related code. Now from here also remove the ID. As you can see here, role name also we are passing directly. So instead of passing directly, let's create two constants. And these constants I'm going to create using the enum. First, create the package. Package name, let's say utils. Inside this utils package, create the constant utils enum. Just declaring two enums like admin and user. Now instead of using role string directly, we will take values from the constant utils enum. I hope now this code is more meaningful. Even here also you can see there is a ID dependency. So we need to modify some more logic also. You can see we are using the generics concept. Let's open the I service interface. Here we can see declared four basic CRUD related methods. But now if we want to remove the dependency of ID, then we need one more method for find by name. But if we declare inside this interface, then even we have to modify the book service IMPL class also. So the best way is to create a new interface. And the new interface is a kind of role specific. Give a name like I role service. And this interface will extend the I service interface. Here, let's declare one method like find by name. 
so this approach we called one of the solid design principles and basically we are following the interface segregation principle now only we have to modify the role service impl class open the role service impl class here change the interface from i service to i role service as we have added one new method so we need to override find by name method you can see other methods are not creating any problems find by name is not a default method so need to declare this method in the role repository interface the code which i am going to add is like the typical code whenever we need to add our own method then this is the way Okay, so role repository changes are done. Now let's call this find by name method from role service IMPL find by name method. See, I am just trying to make everything perfect. Okay, so these class changes are also done. Now close unused classes. Okay, so first let's modify the required changes in the application class. Here, first we need to change i service to i role service, then only we can access find by name method. See, this code also perfect. Now, same way, let's add this line of code in the register method also. But first, we need to declare role repository. And that's it. We added most of the Spring Boot related changes. Now let's start the server. And server started without any error. Now let's focus on the React Redux related changes. Okay, so here let's open the register.js file. First, here we need to implement the on click event for the register button. So this is the register button. Now let's add the on click event as we did for the reset button. Function name, let's say register user. Let's implement the register user function. First, prepare the user object. Like here, we have four fields like name, email, password, and contact. Now, I am considering all four fields. Later, I'll remove the name and contact and will add retype password. But for this time, I'm just keeping the old code. JSON object we prepared with the help of state values. This entire object I am going to pass to the Redux register user action. The register user action we have not yet implemented. Don't worry, I am going to show you the entire code flow. Here you can see this is the way we can call the register user function. So after this line, let's call the reset register form. Now call set timeout function and we'll add some simple logic. So logic is like after execution of register user, we will receive the message and the message like user saved successfully. And if we have this message as part of the state, then we'll show the message in toast and then redirect back to the login page. But before add any further logic, let's add register user function in Redux action file. We'll copy some of the code from the login component. So open the login JS file. First, copy the service index import. Here, I modified from authenticate user to service user. And at the end, let's add map state to props and map dispatch to props code also. This code also copied from the login component. Now, let's add the required changes. In map state to props, instead of auth, let's replace with user. And in map dispatch to props, let's replace authenticate user to register user. And instead of two arguments, let's replace them with the user object. We need to add connect import also. Let's check where this register user call is navigating. See, it is not going anywhere, just navigating to the import. Let's check the same thing in the login component. See, it is navigating to the auth actions. Like we added code for authenticate user, same way we will add code for the register user. Register user code, I'm not going to add in the auth package. I'll add changes in the user package. User related files like user actions, user reducer, and user types. Let's open all three files. In user types file, as you can see, all three constants are starting from fetch. First, let's remove fetch from all three constants. Add one more constant for user saved success. Now, let's add changes to the other two files also. First, let's change the import style.
import related changes are done. Now let's add one more case for user saved success. Here in return, I'm adding the message. See, simple, reducer changes are also done. Let's open the user actions. First, change the import style. Change these constant names also. Okay, these generalized changes are done. Now, let's add a new method for register user. Let me copy the code from fetch users, then we'll modify the code accordingly. Okay, so here, instead of user success, let's add our own logic. And here, type must be user saved success. And in payload, we'll contain the message. And now, change the URL. After the URL, pass the user object. Here, I forgot one thing like method type must be post instead of get. We'll change later. Now, go back to the register component. As you can see, now it is navigating to user actions, register user method. So I'm done with all the changes from React and Redux side. One more important thing I want to add in Spring Boot code side. As you can see here, I'm only allowing the user authenticate method using the endpoint. But as we knew, we added one more endpoint for register user. So we need to modify this end matchers parameter as well. The best way to handle that is like instead of passing one by one, let's replace this value with the generalized value like user slash star. That is the only change required. So even after, if we add forgot password feature, then no need to modify any change in this file. Server restarted. So most of the changes are done. Now let's test register user functionality is working or not. Now let's refresh the page. As you can see, it is throwing some export related error. Let's fix this first. Okay, so remove the export from the line number eight and save this file. See, register page is opening properly. Let's open the PostgreSQL database also. And here is the database. Let's query the user table. See, two records are coming. Now, let's save the user data using the register page. Click on the register button. See here, we are not seeing any message because set timeout function logic we have not yet implemented. Let's check database record saved or not. Okay, record not saved. And this is happening because the method type we kept wrong. Let's correct the method type. And here, apart from this, one more thing we need to change in the register component. In the user object, we need to use mobile instead of contact. And that's it. Let's try now. Open the browser console also. Now open the network tab. As you can see, now we are getting a response as 200. Even here also, you can see the response as test saved successfully. Let's check in the database. Here you can see the record saved. But one thing, if you notice like role ID is saving as null because we modified the role related logic. So let's drop this database and create a new database. Database created. Now we need to start the Tomcat server. Server started. Let's refresh the BookDB. See, tables created. Now let's query the role table. See, two roles are available like admin and user. Now let's query the user table. See here, two records are available. Again, let's save the record using the registered user. Okay, as last time, I hope the record was saved successfully. Let's check in the database. See record saved successfully. Now you can see role ID is also there. Looks like things are working as expected. The only thing that is missing like the toast notification. But before that, let's check the newly added user login is happening or not. See login is working. User logged in successfully. See all the menus are working as expected. Oops, user list is not working. Giving error like slice is undefined. So we need to add a check at line number 87. Here, just add the simple check. Let's check now. Let's click on reload. See, it's working. Now click on logout. Here also, logout message is missing. Let's implement the rest of the required changes. Toast code, I'm going to copy from the book component. First, let's copy the import statement. Need to create two state variables for show and message.
Let's add the required code in the set timeout function. So basically, if the message is there, then modify the state value for show and message. And inside this, add one more timeout function. Like after 3000 milliseconds, change the state value for show and navigate back to the login page. And for else case, just change the state value. Okay, so set timeout related changes are done. Now we need to add my toast related code inside the return. Here also, copying the code from the book component and modify it accordingly. See, we modified the code. Now let's check toast is coming or not. Let's register a new user. See, toast is coming properly and after 3000 milliseconds, it is redirecting back to the login page. Let's log in using the new user. Logged in successfully. Now here, logout message is missing. Let's add a logout message also. Open the app.js file. Like here, in the case of logout route, instead of passing login directly, let's pass the arrow function with some message. Let's check this message in the login component. So if message is there, then show the alert component as well. Here, one error alert is already there. Let's add a success alert also. Don't worry, this code is very simple. And that's it. Let's check now logout message is coming or not. See logout message is coming. Let's test the entire flow in one shot. See, everything is working as expected. I committed the changes whatever I added for this video. I'll show you from where you can find this code. Let's open our GitHub page. If you want, you can follow me on GitHub also. See, here is the repository. Here are the changes. I hope you learned something from this video. Next video, we'll do some code refactor and we'll add some other simple features also. That's it for this video. Please subscribe and press the bell icon. Thanks for watching this video.